All right, so your unit exam is a week from tomorrow. I posted on Google Classroom this morning the review package. Okay, the review package contains a review sheet as well as a practice test. Okay, so exactly the same as what I did for the chemistry unit. Okay, so make sure you do the review package or the review sheet, and then once you feel you've you know done a pretty decent job of your studying, check how well versed you are by doing the practice test. I also included the key for the practice test so you can check your answers afterwards, All right? All right, first topic that we covered in this unit was the cell theory, okay? Should you know the three points of the cell theory? I would, okay? It's an easy multiple choice question, okay? Which of the following is not part of the cell theory as there are three points and usually four items in a multiple choice question, okay? So be ready for something like that. Um, also know the people, okay? There's only, you know, four people we really have to know in the cell theory. It's not like in chemistry where we had to remember all the people to do with the atom, all right? So we need to know Hook, okay? Because Hook's the guy who discovered cells. We need to know Leeuwenhoek because he's the guy who first looked at living cells. And we need to know the two Savidish guys who came up with the original cell theory, Schleiden and Schwann, okay? Um, so we need to make sure we know those people. Which point of the cell theory is one you might get the opportunity to use in written response questions? Right, that cells carry out the basic functions of the organism, okay? There are on this test probably three questions where you could legitimately work that into your answer, okay? All right, after the cell theory, Okay, then we talked about um, size estimation, microscopy, how to use the microscope, okay, things like that. There could be some multiple choice questions about using the microscope, okay, maybe about how we carry it or okay, things like that. You're not going to be asked to label a diagram of the microscope. But I could put on there a picture of something viewed through the microscope and ask you how big it is, ask you to estimate the size. If I was to do that, okay, I would have the picture, okay? Um, so that, let's say I would have like probably like a square picture, but I would draw a circle and I would say the circle represents the field of view on the high power lens. Okay? And I would probably tell you that the field of view on the high power lens is 400 micrometers, okay? And here's the object. How big is it? And then there would be, you know, it'd be probably multiple choice question. Right. So there would be some obviously wrong answers and maybe one or two that are reasonable. Okay. Pick the best one. Everybody with me there? Okay. We know how to do that. So that's not too tough. Okay. And then we talked about the modes of nutrition. Okay. We talked about chemo heterotrophs and we talked about photoautotrophs. Know those terms. Be able to use those terms properly if you were explaining possibly why plant and animal cells have differences, okay? That would be an important question to use those terms in. All right, so chemoheterotrophs would be what kind of organisms? Right, that use organic molecules essentially for food, okay? Uh, so they would be things like mostly animals, okay? Lots of bacteria, fungus, okay? Those would all be chemoheterotrophs, okay? While the other group is the photoautotrophs, okay? Um, those are the ones that can carry out photosynthesis. Plants, some protists, okay? Some bacteria. The big thing with Modes of nutrition is its effect on cell structure. Okay, why are plant and animal cells different? Okay, or chemoheterotrophs need to have certain structures within their cells. What are they? Why? Okay, things like that. You need to be able to explain those types of things. Okay, cell structure also. How many quizzes did you have where you had to label the parts of a cell and tell me what they do? Three. Should you expect to have to do that again? Yes. Okay. Label, give the function okay, of basic cellular structures. All right. So there is okay, definitely going to be um, a question on the test about that. 
Okay, we briefly talked about eukaryotic versus prokaryotic cells, okay, and I am going to go over that in more detail on Monday. Okay, um, Thursday and Friday I've got set aside for something else, but Monday I'm going to go over the differences between prokaryotes and eukaryotes in more detail, okay, but that is something that will um, be touched on. It's not a huge part of the test by any stretch, okay, but it will be touched on probably in the multiple choice. Okay, remember that prokaryotic cells don't have organelles. Okay, eukaryotic cells do. Okay, we had a term for that. If they had organelles, they had started with C. Big long word. Meant being broken up into little rooms. Compartmentalization. Okay, probably an important term. I would say you should probably know it. Okay, and then cell transport, so I had compartmentalization right there. Okay, cell transport. Definitely know the big three. What are the big three? And osmosis. Diffusion, active transport, and osmosis. Those are the three big ones. Okay, probably a third of the written response questions deal with cell transport, and there's probably another one or two where you could work it into the answer, All right? So it's big, okay? Those, those three are big. There will be real world application type questions about cellular transport. So like, here's a situation that maybe a cell finds itself in or an organism finds itself in. Um, based on these conditions, what cellular transport process will occur? How will it occur? Explain what will happen. So you would have to say, well, this is osmosis uh, because there's a difference in concentrations of salts between one side of the membrane and the other. Water is going to move across the membrane because that's what happens in osmosis. Water moves across the membrane to balance salt concentrations. The cell will shrink. The cell will pop, whatever. Okay, Something along those lines is kind of kind of be what you're going to deal with. Right? Everybody with me on that? So expect to have kind of real world application type questions about diffusion, osmosis, and active transport right the other ones that we talked about okay we talked about uh, receptor mediated endocytosis we talked about uh, phagocytosis and pinocytosis those are very minor essentially they will not be in the written response okay they will not be okay those three they could be in the multiple choice there could be some questions about phagocytosis pinocytosis and receptor mediated endocytosis in the multiple choice, but they will not be in the written. Okay. All right, then we talked about multicellularity. Okay, there is one question in the written response solely dedicated to multicellularity, specialization, okay, being able to talk about, okay, what that means. So I'm going to give you an example in that question. And you're going to need to talk about multicellularity, advantages, disadvantages. Why is it truly multicellular? Okay, talk about specialization, things like that. Okay, division of labor, all that kind of stuff. Using an example we've gone over a few times. All right, then, okay, and so we talked about the advantages. We also talked about how yesterday on, on the quiz, that multicellularity, multicellularity allowed organisms to overcome the surface area to volume ratio problem. They could get big, but would still maintain a good surface area to volume ratio by being made up of small cells. Okay, um, so look at examples of specialization in plants. Okay, we talked about the layers of the leaf. Okay, as the prime example of specialization in plants, but I mean, we could go as far as to say also, you know, xylem and phloem are examples of that too. Um, so just make sure you've gone over your notes on, you know, the different types of cells in the leaf and the different types of cells in the plants, okay, that do different jobs and okay, be able to explain how that shows specialization by telling me these cells do this job, these cells do this job, that's why they look different, okay, something like that. Okay, so like I said, layers of the leaf goes with specialization. Okay, transport in plants. All right, I gave you a diagram about that. We had a lab about that. Okay, it's important. Okay, you need to be able to explain 
how plants transport water and nutrients as well as sugar okay the names of the tubes that do that how they do that the, the processes involved okay things like that limitations stuff like that right so definitely be able to explain okay in detail how that works now these again could be practical application questions i may say here's a plant in this situation in terms of cell transport or sorry in terms of um, plant transport what difficulties may this plant have in this situation okay or something along those lines and you would have to think okay so plants use osmosis that can be affected by salts is there salt in this question okay stuff like that that's how you're going to have to take what you know okay and mix it around in order to apply it to that situation right it's not just a matter of recalling everything you know you've got to be able to evaluate a question and say okay what i know fits here in this way All right, parts of the plants, phloem, xylem, root, stem, leaves. Okay, make sure you know those parts, what their roles are. Again, that's examples of specialization. Okay, um, it's examples of different tissues within the plant. Okay. okay, so know the phloem and xylem, know where they are, what they transport, okay, that kind of thing. That could be kind of easy multiple choice or even possibly written response stuff, but pretty easy. Okay, and again, plant transport, the forces involved, okay? Osmosis, gravity, polar nature of water, cohesion, adhesion, okay, all of that stuff works in there. Okay, so make sure that you're including all of that in a detailed explanation. Okay, plant growth and development, right? That was the day where we talked about tropisms and we talked about hormones in a plant, okay? We talked about how a plant's final shape is an adaptation to its environment, okay? It's not a genetically predetermined thing, right? So um, be able to talk about that kind of stuff in a written response question. Okay, um, again, I'll probably have, there's lots of pictures on this test. Like there's a picture for almost every question in the written response. There's tons and tons of pictures. So I'll have a picture of a plant, okay? And I'll give you an explanation of the situation it's in. Read the situation carefully. Look at the plant carefully. Look at the surroundings of the plant carefully. And then determine for me like which tropism is going on, okay? Not just determine which tropism, but then also explain how, why. Okay. Why did this plant undergo this tropism? How does this tropism work? How do all tropisms work? Okay, auxins help. What else? What do auxins make the plant do? Okay, how does it make it bend? Right, one side grows faster than the other, okay, causing it to bend. These are like that's the level of detail, right? If you go, oh, it's phototropism caused by auxins. Five mark question? That's two. Okay, there's three marks explaining how that works to get you up to five. Okay, make sure you have level of detail. On that note, level of detail is important here. Okay, if a question is out of five marks, make sure you've written five point worthy points. Okay, in your answer, make sure you're including things like that. Like, think a question through. Okay, Mr. Coderre is talking about. Um, cellular transport. I think it's osmosis. So identifying that's probably one mark. And then talking about differences in solutes is probably a mark that it's only water and it's across a membrane. And here's how it applies to this situation. Oh, I'm up to five marks. Okay. I probably covered everything. Okay. Whereas you just say, oh, it's osmosis because salts are different. Okay. That's the level of detail. I know you know more than that, but I can't give you marks for what I know. I can only give you marks for what you show. Okay. So you got to make sure you write it all down. Okay, on there. Okay, that gets you, however, to a delicate balancing point. Because I sometimes have people who take this too far. They go, Coderre says lots and lots of detail. So they start writing down everything they know. And before you know it, they're contradicting themselves. Okay, once you contradict yourself in a question, I can't give you anything. Because you've said one thing, and then you've said something else. Okay, and these two things don't agree with each other. They can't both be right. And I have to go, I can't give you marks for writing down everything you knew in the hopes that one of the things was right. 
okay? Because I've had people who try to do that, okay? On a tropism question, they're like, well, it's it's phototropism because of this, and it's geotropism because of this, and it's stigmotropism because of this, and I'm like, it's one. It's one of those things. Pick one and explain it, okay? It can't be all three. Everyone kind of follow there, okay? So you have to decide on something, and then you have to see if you can get enough points to be worth the number of points the mark is out of, or the question is out of. All right, so we got growth, development, adaptation, okay, hormones, tropisms, okay, again, adapt to its environment, right, all of that stuff. Okay, so the test is, hang on, open it up here and we'll tell you how many questions and stuff are on it. All right, so there are 26 multiple choice questions. There are nine written response questions. There's 53 marks in the written. Okay, the whole test is out of 79, which is less than your chem test was out of. Your chem test was out of 84 or something like that. Okay, so this has got a little less on it. Um, all right, so in the multiple choice, like we said, there's stuff in there about microscopes, there's stuff in there about cell structure, cell transport, um, lots of cell structure stuff, plant structure stuff, you know, like what does lignin do, um, turgor pressure, okay, things like that are, are going to be tested in there. And, and those are things also that you can work into some of the uh, written response items, you know, talking about trigger pressure, or talking about, you know, the role of lignin and cell walls and things like that. Um, there's some stuff in there about prokaryotes and eukaryotes, cell theory, um, plant structure, plant transport, plant growth and development. There's a little bit of everything in there, but it's mostly recall. There's not a lot of, at, there's not a lot of analysis or evaluation or anything like that in the multiple choice. It's mostly, oh, I remember that answer. I memorized that. Okay, that's kind of what the multiple choice is about. Okay, in the written response, okay, we have a question about how plants regulate the amount of water they lose. Okay, so think about adaptations a plant has that relate to controlling water loss. Okay, it was something that we talked about. It's a plant structure kind of question. Okay, and then, as I said, there's, quest there's questions about um, like tropisms. Okay, in the written, there's a cell diagram in the written. Okay, there's a multicellularity question. Uh, there's plant structure question. Cell transport, cell transport. Um, plant growth and adaptation and cell size and transport. That's your nine written response questions, okay? And all but two of them, sorry, all but three. So six out of the nine have pictures that go with them. The pictures are important, okay? I have photocopied the test in color so that the pictures show up really well. All right, so that's what you can expect a week from tomorrow. Okay, are there any questions or things you would like me to review or go over in more detail? What's that? I was going to go over that on Monday. I have a lesson on that. Take about half the class or so on Monday. Okay, but the, the big thing is that eukaryotes have compartmentalization. Prokaryotes do not, but I'll go into more detail about it on that particular day. Um, so not all of that lesson on prokaryotes and eukaryotes will be tested because some of it is AP material. I'll tell you what parts are tested and what aren't. Okay, when we get to that one. Okay, anything else? Amanda. Size estimation. Okay, so if we know um, how big our field of view is, so okay, let's say we're looking at the low power lens. Okay, that's the middle one, the yellow one. It has a field of view of 1600 micrometers. That means that from this side to this side is 1600 micrometers. Okay, so if I'm looking at something that's, let's say, that big, 
that's roughly a quarter of it. Okay, so this thing would be about 400 micrometers in size. Okay, that's all I have to do. It's just an estimate because it's going to be a multiple choice type question. The answer will be fairly obvious mathematically. No, I will tell you what it is. Yeah. Oh, go ahead and ask. Oh, are you saying you don't want me to record your question? Yes, I'm done the measurement part. Yes. Yes. And Pino and yeah. Okay. So um, the three, the, the small three, okay, we know the big three are diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. The small three uh, methods of cell transport all have to do with changing the shape of the membrane to get materials in, essentially engulfing something and bringing it into the cell. So mechanically, they're all the same. The, the membrane just folds in on itself and makes a bubble. Okay, which we call a vesicle. Okay, um, that's that's how they all work. Okay, phagocytosis is the one where a solid particle gets devoured. Okay, or engulfed. Pinocytosis just engulfs fluid. Receptor mediated is triggered, so the receptors on the cell membrane receive a hormone or some other chemical signal and engulf it and bring it in. Okay, but again, mechanically they're all the same. The cell engulfs them. Okay, what else? Okay, so the hormones for plants, the big ones are auxins. Okay, auxins cause the lengthening okay, of the cell, right? They're the ones that are most involved in tropisms. Not to say other ones aren't also, but they're the ones that make the cells get longer most quickly. Okay, we have cytokinins. Okay, they cause cell division. Right, so that's how a plant replaces old, diseased, dying, damaged cells, whatever. Okay, we have um, gibberellins, okay, uh, which mostly affect um, growth on new shoots, as well as uh, blossoms. They have a lot to do with the blossoms. We didn't talk about that that day, but they do have a lot to do with the number of blossoms a plant will make. Okay, uh, they're, These ones are a pretty minor hormone because they're basically a secondary hormone for these other two. They perform overlapping chores with those two. Okay, Then we had abscisic acid. Okay, And that one disrupts chlorophyll production. Uh, leading to dormancy. So that's the fall hormone. Okay, it's the one they would secrete in the fall. And then we had ethylene. Okay, it ripens fruit and um, promotes, again, dormancy or senescence. Okay, senescence means death. Okay, um, if it's an annual plant like a tomato, it basically just signals for the plant that you're done, you're good, you made your you made your seeds off to <laughs> off to the soil with you, I guess. That, yeah. Okay, that's what that one does. If it's a um, perennial plant, then it signals the production of abscisic acid, and the abscisic acid will cause the plant to become dormant after that. Okay, it just depends on whether it's a perennial or an annual. Okay, perennials come back every year. Annuals seed themselves. A new plant grows the next year. Okay. All right, that good? So, okay. Okay, tropisms. So we only have three, right? Okay, phototropism. Okay, response to light. Okay. 99% of the time, that's growth towards light. Okay, we had geotropism. All right, that's a growth response to gravity. And then we had thigmotropism. Okay, 
Okay, and that's touch. All right, we already talked, we talked about the mechanism a minute ago. So I think those are the three. Anything else? Okay, well, you got the rest of the class to work on the review stuff that I posted on Google Classroom. Okay, so there's a review uh, sheet there. Okay, and then there's the practice test, which probably you won't do today. Okay, but you got the review sheet there that has some some old exam questions on it, but also some suggestions for things to look up in your notes and make some new notes about, kind of to refresh your memory on them. Okay, so I would suggest that's what you should be working on now, unless you just want to review your notes. If that works better for you, okay, that's fine. Or if you know you brought some recipe cards along and you want to make flashcards or whatever, okay. Do whatever you need to do, okay? But you've got the remainder of the class to study. If more questions come up, please ask and I will answer them.